Hello and welcome to GrassiMath.com, where math is for everyone. This is our second little pre-lesson before we move on to the next level of equations. In this, we're going to learn a quick note about fractions. I promise you, promise you, promise you that in algebra, fractions are meant to make your life easier and not harder. And the reason is because decimals are actually a pain to work with in algebra, but fractions are kind of an easy little way to do multiplying and dividing in just one step. How do you work with fractions in algebra? Well, most of the time when you're working with fractions in algebra, your top number of the fraction, AKA the numerator, I don't like the word numerator. It's a very old fashioned word. I like to think of the top number of a fraction as the multiplier. It's a number that's going to multiply. I like to think of the bottom number of a fraction as a number that is going to divide. That is the divider number. Over here I gave some quick examples, so let's take a look at those. The first one I gave is a negative fraction because I know people always get nervous about that. When you see a negative sign on as a fraction, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time it's fine. You can just stick it with the top number. You don't have to count it toward both numbers. That would not be correct. You only have one negative and you can use it up on the three. Okay, so negative 3. All right, so negative 3 is a multiplier. So basically, I'm going to times it with the 5. Once I get my answer, I'm just going to divide my answer with the bottom number. And that's it. I'm done. Okay, so let's do that process. Negative 3 times 5 makes negative 15. And then I divide the 5. So negative 15 divided by 5 makes negative 3. Don't leave your answer as a fraction if you can simplify it. By that, what do I mean? I mean, if you can turn it into a number that's not a decimal, or if you can do that little trick, which you probably learned in elementary and also middle school, where you can kind of simplify the number on the top and the bottom, you have to do that. If you would need to use decimals, you do not have to do it. I don't care if the big number is on top of the fraction. That has nothing to do with anything in high school. That's an elementary school rule where big numbers cannot be on top of the fraction. You are allowed to have the larger number on top, just like how I have here the 15 on top of my fraction. You are allowed to do that. So it's very important. I see many students struggle with that idea. Can I have the large number on top? Yes, you can. Okay, what's next? 11 on top. Is this a multiplier or a divider? Very good. If you said multiplier, you are right. What's 11 times 2? It's 22. Okay, and what do I do with that bottom number again? Oh yeah, I divide it. Now 22 divided by 7. Am I going to get a nice round whole number or am I going to need to use decimals? I would need to use decimals. So guess what? The beautiful part of fractions is, in algebra at least, you don't have to do any more work. You can leave it just like this, and that would be your final answer. You don't have to adjust anything, change it to a decimal, nothing. Now, if you came up with a number where you could shrink the numerator and the denominator, we will see those in future problems, you do have to do the simplifying process. So, for example, if I came up with something like 12 over 15, I could easily divide this part by 3 and divide this part by 3, and I would come up with 4 over 5. That's simplifying. So you've probably seen that process before in your lifetime. If you can do that, you have to because you're working with smaller numbers and everyone likes smaller numbers. But if you can't, just leave it alone. If you can make a whole number, go ahead and make it. And those are the rules of fractions in algebra. That's just about it until we get to much more advanced stuff. And by that time, you'll be comfortable and feeling very secure. So this is the perfect way to take care of fractions for the time being. In the future, I'll teach you some more strategies about fractions, but for now, this should get us much farther than you might think. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. And of course, to visit the website where math is for everyone, www.grossymath.com. Have a great day, guys.